All is quiet today at the bank with the Jaguars on the road the next couple weeks. The next home game, October 13th, when Drew Brees or er, Teddy Bridgewater and the Saints come to Jacksonville. Today, the Jaguars touching down in Denver, Colorado, hometown of that man, Calais Campbell, for a matchup with the 0-3 Broncos. Will the elevation make a difference? Can Minshew Mania continue another week? But the biggest question everybody's asking about is still Jalen Ramsey. It's been another interesting week when it comes to number 20. The coaching staff not knowing whether they would have Ramsey on the field Sunday or not. Well, they still don't know, but that's more because of injuries rather than availability. Jalen is with the team. Speaking of which, we have team coverage in Denver as your official Jaguars stations, and we kick things off with Action Sports Jacks, Brent Martineau. Downtown Denver, a beautiful weekend for football here in Colorado as the Jaguars get set to take on the Denver Broncos Sunday afternoon on CBS 47. Broncos desperate for a win. They're 0-3. Jaguars coming off a win and a little bit of rest. They haven't played since last Thursday night against the Tennessee Titans. Of course, the big story these last couple of weeks has been Jalen Ramsey. He did get back from Nashville to travel with the team from Jacksonville here to Denver. So he is here, still listed as questionable. But you have to figure, since Ramsey is with the Jags, he most likely likely will play in the football game as long as he is healthy. It appears that he's over his sickness from earlier in the week. Now we'll have to see how the tightness in his back feels when the Jaguars take the field against the Broncos. We'll keep you posted, of course, on Ramsey for the next 24 hours or so. Meanwhile, Calais Campbell comes home. He's from Denver, Colorado, and for just the second time in his career, he'll play here in Denver. It means something to be back home and play a football game in the stadium against the Broncos. I feel prepared, ready to go. You know, I mean, uh, 10 days is a long time, but at the same time, I mean, we played, you know, two games in five days. So, you know, we needed the extra time to get our bodies right. But, uh, you know, it also allowed us time to prepare. So, uh, ready to go. Did you get all your ticket stuff and everything out of the way? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I had to, you know, don't want that to be a distraction this, uh, this close to the game. So, you know, if you didn't get ticket by now, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it's not going to happen. You mentioned earlier this week about playing at home and, and about growing up around here and seeing that stadium. Uh, we, you played only one other time. Will you have some nerves tomorrow, a little bit different than a normal game? Will there be some yeah. butterflies? There's going to be definitely a lot of emotion. You know, I'm going to have to try to channel uh, and try to use for the positive because you definitely can, you know, you can get too hyped up and, you know, start making mistakes and, you know, want to make a play too much that you, you know, kind of Step, step wrong and you know a lot of stuff can go either way but uh, if you use it in uh, the right way though it can also allow you to play fast and explosive and make plays amidst all the Jaguars storylines oh yeah Minshew mania rolls on Gardner Minshew will make his third start in the NFL and he brings the show on the road to mile high with the Jaguars in Denver I'm Brent Morton action sports Jacks. Thank you, Brent. As for the opponent this week, perhaps nobody said it better than receiver Emmanuel Sanders, who described the current feel for the Broncos as, quote, living in a world of suck, unquote. It's quite the quote right there. Zero sacks, zero turnovers, and zero wins. Still, it's the NFL. Anything can happen from week to week. So we bring in Marcel Robinson to scout the enemy and let Jaguar fans know what to expect come Sunday in the Mile High City. One of the bigger debates over the past few years has been whether Joe Flacco is an elite quarterback or not. So far in his brief stint with the Denver Broncos, he's not doing much to help his case. The Broncos quarterback, Joe Flacco, doesn't usually play well against the Jaguars. That was the case last time he played against them, which was London of 2017. He was so bad, he was benched in the fourth quarter. And Flacco hasn't had the best start since joining the team this year. It could have something to do with his targets the talent drop-off is pretty steep after Emmanuel Sanders. On the ground, the Broncos feed the ball to Phillip Lindsey and Royce Freeman, both of whom can be counted on to catch a few through the air. As for the defense, they're still looking for their first turnover of the season and their first sack. If Minshew is smart and gets rid of the ball fast, that number should stay at zero. One of the biggest problems for the Broncos is that they always seem to get off to a slow start. In fact, they've only scored three points in the first quarter of the last three games. On the road with the Jaguars, this time in Denver, Colorado, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jacks. All right, Action News Jacks, your official Jaguars stations. We are getting you ready for the Jags game against the Broncos on countdown to kickoff. That would be Sunday at 1130 a.m. on CBS 47. That's 9.30 Mountain Time if you're in Denver. 
followed by the game at 425. Then we'll have your post game coverage on the Action News Jacks app as well as Facebook Live. And then we wrap up the entire evening with Action Sports Jacks Primetime, your favorite weekend show. I know that because you're watching it right now. All right. We'll, of course, have that at 1030 on Fox 30 and 1130 on CBS 47 with all your coverage from Denver to Jacksonville and everywhere in between, which is actually a lot of places in between those two. So maybe not everywhere in between, but some of the places in between. We'll have those.